Today, we'll use Fermat's little theorem. Now, let's recall what this says. If p is prime, then a to the p is congruent to a mod p. Now, we can take the contrapositive of that statement, exchanging the if and the then and negating those two statements. Now, that contrapositive also holds, and this is a general phenomenon. If we have a theorem of the form, if p is prime, then such and such, well, if we can show that the such and such doesn't happen, then we can conclude that p isn't prime. So let's try this. Let's, let's try this with a specific number, like 532,481. Now, I've chosen that number partly because it has this, this nice structure. It's, it's 2 to the 19th plus 2 to the 13th plus 1. All right, so we're going to compute 2 to the n, and we're going to see if that is or is not congruent to 2 modulo n. Now, I don't really want to multiply 2 by itself half a million times. So instead, what I'm doing here is repeated squaring. I'm starting out with 2, squaring that to get 2 to the 2, squaring that to get 2 to the 4, squaring that to get 2 to the 8, and so on and so on, and so on. So here I've got 2 to the 2 to the 6th, and if I just multiply that by 2, that's an easy way to compute 2 to the power 2 to the 6 plus 1. And then I'll square that to get 2 to 2 times 2 to the 6 plus 1, and I'll keep on squaring that, and I'll keep on squaring that, and I'll keep on squaring that, and eventually I'll end up with 2 to the 2 to the 13th times 2 to the 6 plus 1. I'll multiply that by 2, and that gives me 2 to the n. So 2 to the n is not congruent to 2 modulo n. And consequently, n is not prime. And in fact, we can see that it factors as 647 times 823. Let's try this again on an even bigger number, on 2 to the 256 plus 1. We'll use the same kind of repeated squaring trick. I'll start out with 2 to the 1st. I'll square that. I'll square that. These numbers aren't too big yet. Well, they do, they do get bigger uh, you know, rather quickly. Uh, okay, now they're much too big for me to even write down. So I'll just write down the beginnings and the endings of uh, the numbers that I'm getting. But then, ooh, look at what happens here. Now I got 1. And once I get to 1, every subsequent time that I square, I'm just still at 1. So, uh, you know, I'll just keep on doing this repeated squaring. I don't actually have to do any computation because 1 squared is 1. And eventually, I find out that 2 to the power 2 to the power 256, uh, that's 1. And consequently, 2 to the n is congruent to 2 modulo n. So that enormous number, it passes this test. But that doesn't mean that it's prime. Remember, the condition is if this doesn't happen, then the number is not prime. So if this does happen, well, we can't really say anything. So let's try this thing again. But instead of using 2 as the base, we'll use 3. So we'll start with 3. We'll square that. We're doing the same kind of repeated squaring here to find 3 to the power 2 to the power something. We just keep on squaring. It's quite a bit of computation. Just keep on squaring. Speed through. Speed this up. Keep going, keep going, keep persevering, keep going, keep going, keep persevering. Okay, here we go. So we've got 3 to the n is not 3 modulo n. And consequently, this number n, 2 to the 256 plus 1, that number is not prime. Now, it does actually factor. That maybe leaves you wondering how we found that factorization. But we don't actually need to know the factorization to know the number's not prime. The fact that it fails this primality test is enough to conclude that this absolutely enormous number is not prime.